Good turn up. Lots of new recruits. Any bright new sparks? Some days you just know that nothing could possibly go wrong. Check. You're gone. Well, uh, not quite. Check. Mate. Where did he learn that? I don't know. He just started this term. Gregory, I'm impressed. Thank you, sir. It's not often one sees someone as young as you using Karpisky's gambit. Sir? Smoothing your night to tempt your opponent into exposing his own weakness. It's a classic chess gambit for when all seems lost. Well, surely you knew that. Just seemed the obvious thing to do, sir. Hey, Kate. Hi, Vinyardis. Guess what? We've got this fantastic idea, but it needs three people. And we've decided to include you in it. Oh, really? You're gonna love it. And what if I don't? Well, you've got no choice. You either love it and join in, or we make your life totally miserable. And we'd hate to do that. So, what's the idea, then? We can't tell you. It's a secret. We're still working out the details. And when we do, you'll be the first to know. Don't look at me. I don't get it either. What's up? So what's the occasion? Last year's end of school party with my friends. My real friends back home in England. Looks like you were having fun. It was the best time I've ever had. So what's the problem? Because, silly, this year's party is in two weeks' time. And I won't be going because I'm stuck here. Never mind. You'll be able to go back someday. No, I won't. I'll never go back to England. My friends will all forget me and I'll never see civilization again. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, Headmaster. First item of business this afternoon is to announce the inter-school chess team. Big deal. And to present them with their team jumpers. Mr White. And this year, it's an especial pleasure because for the first time, our chess team includes a student from year five, Gregory King. Greg? Me? They must have got the names mixed up. Go on, Greg. Congratulations, Greg. I know you'll do Deep Creek proud. It's as good as in the bag. Mummy! Mummy! You'll never guess what I did today. Oh, darling, isn't it wonderful? You've heard already. We're going back to England. You mean all of us? Of course all of us. Come on, we have to tell everyone the news. But what if I don't want to go? Yes, 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 yes. What's all the excitement about? We've got a fire for Wallaby Park. And we're going back home to England. And, Chris, the new owner is very happy for you and Mark and Kate to stay on living in the house. What about Vinny? Ah, well... Uh, Vinny can stay too, can't he? Uh, well, the new buyer has got his own team of specialist animal handlers, and, as I understand, it's not a problem. But Vinny... So long as animals are looked after properly, I'm happy. But Vinny... Honest, Chris, don't worry about it. So who's the new buyer, anyway? Justin Sloan, the celebrity chef. Oh, come on, he owns a restaurant in every state. The exotic ingredient man. He's on TV all the time. Oh, yes, I think I've read something about him somewhere. Well, he's coming tomorrow to do a tour of inspection. Oh, tomorrow? First thing, and to discuss terms. Oh, my goodness, why didn't you say? Right, everyone, no time for celebrations. Let's jump to it and clean the place up. I want Wallaby Park to shine like it's never shone before. I can't believe this could happen to me. Just when I'm a member of the school chess team and a potential school hero, it could have been so fantastic. And now, 
world champion Boris Krakinovsky is about to make his move. Oh, that's brilliant. What can young King do now? It looks hopeless. Only a truly great chess genius could get out of this. I think it's the end for Great King. Checkmate. Unbelievable! What a move! Ten-year-old Gregory King, representing the Deep Creek Primary School Chess Club, is the new chess champion of the world! Sibylla, it's me. <laughs> me, Gemma. Great news. We're coming home. <laughs> What are you doing on the phone? Uh, nothing, Mummy. You're supposed to be cleaning, not chatting. Who are you talking to? Sibylla. Sibylla in London? Well, why didn't you say so? Sibylla, dear, be a pet and put your mother on. <coughs> Deidre, darling. It's Gabriella. I've got the most wonderful news. <coughs> We're coming home! Do you realise what this means? Finally, freedom from Gemma. She's not that bad. And I'll get my room to myself again. Oh, I can't wait. What about Vinny? What about Vinny? They can't just let him go. You heard what Vinny said. He'll be fine. That's so typical of you, Mark. All you think about is what's in it for you. Kate can be such a wet blanket at times. And I suppose you're over the moon with happiness too. What have I got to be happy about? Going back to your precious England. I don't want to leave here. You don't? Not now. Why not? I like it here. And besides, I've never been anyone important before. Important? You know, the school chess team. So let's do something about it then. What do you expect me to do? Anyway, why should I stand in the way of what everyone else wants? It's not what I want. But Vinny, the animals here are like your children. Okay, the animals don't belong to me. And I'm not the only animal handler around. Yeah, but you're the best. I'm sure this new bloke will look after the animals just fine. But Vinny, that's giving up. We've got to fight for this. I need the cake. But... What are you doing, Greg? I think I know how we can stop the park being sold. How? This Justin Sloan wants to buy a park full of healthy animals, right? So? What if the animals were sick? Gemma, fine. For goodness sake, Mark. Comb your hair. Straighten up, Kate. Where's Greg? Uh, he's doing a last-minute check to make sure everything's looking good. This will be just enough. Gabriella King, Mr. Sloan, welcome to Wallaby Park. Uh, please, call me Justin. Of course, Justin. We're delighted to be able to show you around. Well. Before we continue, I'm afraid there's something rather unpleasant we're going to have to deal with first. What's that? Talk money. I mean, if we can't agree on a price, there's not much point going any further now, is there? I suppose not. Now, I've had my people check it out. This is my offer. Two million two hundred thousand! How much? <laughs> OK, OK. Two million five hundred thousand! Done! Sold! It's all yours, Mr Sloan. Justin, you realise what this means, Mummy? We'll be travelling home first class. <laughs> well, now that that's settled, uh, maybe we can have a look at my new property. Of course. What would you like to see first? Well, you know, Gabriella, I've always been particularly fond of the wombat. How extraordinary. He's my favourite, too. Red Rover 1 to Red Rover 2. Wombats a go. Repeat, Wombats a go. Over. Red Rover 2 to Red Rover 1. Received and understood. Over. It's a marvellous animal, the wombat. It has the perfect balance between fat and muscle tissue. And they're not nearly as demanding as a cat or a dog, are they? So here's one, eh? Is there something wrong with him? Wrong? He's not sick, is he? No, 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 no. He, he's just done... Um... agitation. It is? It's perfectly natural. Extremely natural. All animals do it. I see. Uh, let me show you our koalas, Justin. Did you know that one of the koalas would be now? What is it, our koalas? Red Rover 1 to Red Rover 2. Koalas a go. Repeat, koalas a go. Over. So, 
tell me, Justin. What was it that attracted you to our little wildlife park? Yeah. Uh, well, this is to be the site of my new restaurant. It's fine dining in a bush setting. It's long been a dream of mine, and now at long last <gasps> it's fine. Really? Why didn't you say? Then I simply must show you what's down here. Go and get Vinny and get him down here, fast. Uh, where are you taking me now? See the, uh, wallabies. I thought we were going to see the koalas. We always see the wallabies first. Why? Tradition. We're sticklers for tradition. Wallabies repeat wallabies over. <laughs> OK, Mrs King, just what is going on? Now, even I can see that what we have here is a park full of diseased animals, and if they are sick, then the deal is definitely off. You can't do that. Trust me, little girl, I can do whatever I like. I just can't understand it. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There must be some simple explanation. Vinny, what's going on? Shaving foam. Shaving foam? Shaving foam. It's obviously the work of vandals and hooligans. Mr Sloan, I must apologise for this unfortunate distraction. It's time to do the right thing, Emmett. Chris, call the police. There's no need to call the police. Of course there is. Whoever's responsible for this must be caught and punished. I'm the one responsible for this. No, that's not true. I'm the one who did it. I might have known, you evil little worm. In the house, both of you. But, Mum... Immediately. I shall be in to deal with you soon. I'm so sorry, Mr Sloan. <laughs> Children and animals, eh? What a combination. I just can't believe you could be so irresponsible. What on earth did you think you were doing? We were worried about Vinny losing his job. But Vinny's one of the top animal handlers in the country. He can get a job anywhere. It's not the same, though, is it? It is, actually. Pardon? As it turns out, Justin was so impressed by Vinny's quick thinking that he's agreed to let him stay here. He has? <laughs> so your silly tricks had the desired results after all. Except I don't get to live here anymore or keep my place in the school chess team. Anyway, all's well that ends well. Justin was so nice about it that I've invited him over for dinner tomorrow night. Great! Cool. Then we can sign the papers and get a nice, big, lovely cheque. Oh, dear sweet Kate, you've been such a good friend. I really am going to miss you. Me too. Would you do me a favour? For old time's sake. Of course. Terrific. Here's a list of all my friends in England. I want you to phone them. Why? Well, I know they'd really love to throw me a surprise welcome home party, but they might not have thought of the idea by themselves. So, you're going to phone them and make sure that they do. You're going to organise your own surprise party. Correction, you are. And here's a list of all the presents that they can bring. Presents? But how do you know they'll buy them? Because you're going to make sure that they do, aren't you? Now what's the problem? It's just... doesn't seem like much of a surprise party to me. Such a silly Kate. Don't you know it's the thought that counts? Oh right, mate, still trying to see if you can win against yourself. It's all right for you. You're in lots of teams. This is my first one. Oh, never mind. You can join the club when you get back to England. Check. How'd you do that? Natural talent. What's this? Oh, that's the book that Justin wrote. He gave it to us as a present. A taste for the world. Give up? What? Do you admit that I've won the game? Checkmate. How'd you do that? Natural talent. Thanks, Felicity. I'm sure Gemma would love to see you at the party. A surprise. Oh, and you will remember to keep it a surprise, won't you? Gemma would be so embarrassed if she knew what was happening. A gift? Oh, oh well, something small like a DVD player. That's cool. OK, Felicity, bye. You really are an excellent organiser, Kate. I'm very impressed. Your friends must have so much money. Oh, well, they don't, but their parents do, which is sort of the same thing, really, isn't it? Oh, gosh, look at the time. I'm off to bed. I've still got 30 people to ring. Well, you're such a good organiser, Kate. You don't need me. Nighty-night, sweet Kate. Is Gemma taking advantage of me? Yes. Am I going to do something about it? I wish. Kate, you have to look at this! 
Sorry, Greg, but I have to call half the population of England to tell them about Gemma's party. But I've just finished reading Justin Sloane's book and I've discovered something really terrible. You have to read it. I don't want to hear another word of this nonsense. But it's all here in black and white. I know exactly what you two are up to, but whether you like it or not, Wallaby Park is going to be sold and we are going back to England. You can see it, can't you, Chris? Guys, you're getting yourselves worked up over nothing. Nothing? There is absolutely no proof whatsoever that Justin Sloan will be anything other than the perfect owner for this park. You're letting your imaginations run away with you. Now calm yourselves down and go to bed. Now what do we do? We need a plan. Something that will make Justin reveal his hand. Greg, this is a real-life emergency, not one of your chess games. <laughs> We've got less than 24 hours. We have to do something quickly. Kapiski's Gambit. What? You're wrong, Kate. It is like chess. All we have to do is tempt Justin into exposing his own weakness. Oh, sure. And how do we do that? We sleep on it. And waste even more time? I just have to visualise the moves. Then I'll know what to do. Good night. This is awful. The whole future of Walby Park depends on Greg's dreams. So we see now that what we did was very wrong. And that selling Wallaby Park and going back to England is all for the best. And we want to say that we're really sorry for our silly childish behaviour. Really, really sorry. I'm impressed. That's very mature of both of you. And we've thought of a way to make up for yesterday. We could cook dinner. You two cook for Justin. We could make something out of his own cookbook. It would be the perfect way to show Justin how we feel. Are you sure you could manage it? Oh, we've spent hours studying the book. All right, then. Why not? You won't regret this, Mum. We promise we'll make it a meal to remember. Frankie, these way are done. I hope we've got everything. Three kilos of beef. I think I'll know the difference. It says in the book that if you can't find the real thing, then rub the beef with nutmeg. Hope this is going to work. It's been so sweet. Kate and Greg have been slaving away all day in the kitchen. I'm just worried that our home cooking is going to be a bit in for a dig for a gourmet of your standing. Oh, no, it's nonsense. I love home cooking. I get it so rarely. Wonderful. And after dinner, we can take care of signing the papers. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. This is just a small token to make up for yesterday. And in honour of the occasion, we've cooked a dish from your own cookbook. Well, I'm, I'm touched. A dish that you understand can only be prepared at Wallaby Park. Oh, how marvellous. <laughs> Smells delicious. Oh, great. Looks fabulous. Is this...? Oh, I think it is. Uh, do you mind if I, um...? Mmm. Mmm. That is fantastic. <laughs> no, I don't think I could have done a better job myself. <laughs> a toast to the chefs. Well done, you two. Mmm. Well, this is, uh, this is a rare treat. Actually, tell me something. Was this the, uh, the wombat that you showed me yesterday or did you already have some in the fridge? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, did, did you just say wombat? Mm. Of course, my recipe for wombat is just a variation on the classic birth a la mode, whereas my seared koala filet is a completely original recipe. You see, the trick to cooking native animals is all in the preparation. Worked like a dream. Not even Gabriella could stomach the idea of selling Wallaby Park to someone who wanted to eat all the animals. So everything's worked out for the best and everyone is very, very happy. It's so unfair. What have I done to be condemned to a life of misery in this awful, awful place? Someone is going to pay for this. I almost got rid of her. I almost got rid of her. For a brief moment, I actually thought that was old Wally in that stew. You'd have to cook Wally for an awfully long time to make him edible. Mind you, when you come to think about it, if it's all right to eat cows, sheep and chickens, what could be wrong with eating wombat? Oh, nothing, I suppose. Except in this case, it'd be like eating one of our closest friends. There is that, I suppose. Pity, really. Life would be so simple without all these silly emotions. Hey, Kate. A fantastic idea is about to go into operation. Oh, so does that mean you're going to tell me what it is? 
You guessed it. Are you serious? Is it the best idea you've ever heard? It's worse than anything I could have ever imagined. Meet us at the gates after school today. It'll be sensational. Now, of course, I'll have to phone my friends in England and tell them to cancel my surprise party. What? Why should I do it? Because I can't do it, can I? Then they'd know I knew about the surprise. And it'll be so embarrassing. OK, but you have to do something for me in return. Just name it, anything. Anything? Anything you want. Just please make the calls. Gemma, over here! How come you're not getting on the bus? We're waiting for Gemma's limo. My what? Here it comes now. What's going on? We're starting a new band. It's called the Three Vignatis. But there's only two of you. That's why Kate's joining us, aren't you, Kate? You are? No, you are. What? 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 You need someone who can sing and dance and look really good on stage, right? Right. So Gemma's going to take my place. She is? You're what? I'm what? Kate, have you gone completely mad? Under no circumstances would I ever... Have... I'm going to be so busy making all those phone calls to England. I wouldn't want to get the message wrong, would I? It'd be so embarrassing if they found out the real story. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> Glad to have you with us, Gemma. What do you think of our outfits? Mum made them especially. Bet you can't wait to try yours on. I don't believe it. I've turned into a vignati. This has to be the lowest point of my entire life. Gemma's a vignati, eh? I'm starting to feel glad she stayed. I wouldn't want to miss seeing this for anything. Isn't this brilliant? Gemma in a band. I'm in the school chess team, and we both get to stay at Wallaby Park. This is the most fantastic news in the history of the universe. Yeah.